All right, guys, I just got done editing the video for the differentials. So we got that all knocked out. So now we're going to move on to the shocks. Um, Go to push right through things like two in the morning. Or we're going to get this done. So let's get to it. But all right, yeah, I was not expecting it to take that long to edit that video. That was a long one. So if you made it through that one, this one should be a breeze. <laughs> but all right, yeah. So we're going to talk about shocks. Uh, it's not really too much you can do with these things. Um, there's like no sanding. Thank goodness there's no sanding. Um, like I said, the cleaning, whatever. I don't really go crazy with cleaning because for some reason, I, the Kyosho stuff, it just seems to be pretty clean. So um, good luck, luck there. So. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get you guys on the head mount, and we'll go ahead and start building these things. I don't think there's really anything special, but I'm just going to run you guys through the process real quick. So let's get to it. All right, guys, just like we should have started with the differentials, you want to start with getting everything laid out. I've done a little better job this time. I've already got everything laid out. I got the parts cut out that we need, which are just your shock rod ends your spring caps, whatever you want to call these things, or whatever, I don't know what they're called, and your uh, cap bushings. So once we've got those things trimmed out, let's get everything laid out to where it's in some kind of order, and we can get started. So the only thing that I do to modify my shocks in any way, I think I saw like Adam Drake do this uh, in like an old video a long time ago. I just drill out the bleeder hole a little bit just to help make, or they say it helps, you know, bleed the, the air out of the shocks makes it easier i can't say that it does or or if it does or doesn't i don't know i just picked it up and i've always done it so <laughs> bear with me guys it's pretty early in the morning so get everything laid out like i don't build these things in any particular order i just go ahead and like throw the o-rings and these guys right here Go ahead and get all four of them done. Like I said, I just like to do the, when I'm building like multiple stuff, like four springs, three differentials, I just like to do the process to all of them as I'm building them. Instead of like jumping around and building one and then going to another one. Sands can be kind of a pain to get in sometimes. All right, once I get them in there, same thing. I like take a little bit of grease, just smear it around my finger. So I'm not like putting a lot in there. Because if you put a lot, these things will like hold dirt and it will make a absolute mess on your shock. So. Just kind of keep them from like, you know, getting cut up, I guess, or something like that. So once I get those guys done, Go ahead and put my bladders in. I like to take like a small Allen key or something and just slowly work it around. Get her down in there. Like I said, go ahead and get all four of them knocked out. I don't really like to force them in like the center because it I think it's gonna like hold air behind it so I kind of like try to work them down evenly as possible and I'm not digging at this thing or putting a lot of pressure with this Allen key I'm really just kind of using it to push down on the seal like around the little edge like around here just to push it down past the threads and into the little groove. There's always one that wants to be a pain in the butt. And this one's gonna be it, I can already tell. Just make sure it's all seated. So once you get those done, move these to the front. All right, same way with like the diffs, go ahead and grab up all your O-rings. 
like I said, I've used like silicone oil doing this. I just, like I said, just makes it easier and less headache, less mess to just use what Kyosho gives you. So these are a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more of a headache because there's more of them. And just grab you a, a healthy, a healthy chunk of that, that a grease that Kyosho provides. And like I said, just want to work it around in there. If you can do this without dropping one of these, you're probably doing pretty good. So once you get them all lathered up in there, just kind of push them to one hand. Clean off the other hand. And then you can kind of go through and just kind of... Uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. Put one in each shock. And you can look at your instructions. The next step is this bigger white piece. There's a smooth and rough end to this guy. Sometimes you can feel it. Sometimes you can't. I always like to put the rough end facing towards the bottom. I don't think it's really going to matter though. That was a little rough. Try to avoid that if you can. Should just go down in there nice and easy. That one white piece, I cannot find it. Jeez, look at that thing. It was like blending in right there. I couldn't even see it. Like I said, it's pretty early in the morning. Should probably take my, should probably go to sleep. I hate when they pop in like that. Then if you look at the instructions, next step is another O-ring. Go ahead and push that bad boy in there. Now that you got all the O-rings done, you can clean your hands off. Same way with these little plastic pieces. If you really feel on them, you can, there's like a smooth and a kind of a rough edge. I always like to put the rough edge towards the bottom. Go ahead and push that guy in there. Grab another one. Push that guy in there. Push them down as far as you can. It's a little bit tricky. Go ahead and push it in there. Grab another one. Now grab your little your little lock. I always I try to put the the pointy end first because it kind of holds in there better. And you can just take your finger and rub the other end in, and it'll like it'll fall right into place. And if you're kind of worried about it, you can take something small and just. Make sure it's, uh, it's always seated in. Same thing again. Pointy in first and it'll kind of sit right there. You can just take your finger and just, it'll fall right into place for you. You can visually see that it's seated, so. Same thing. Like I know these things give people a hard time, but if you get it in there, she should just fall down in there. Perfect like that. I think people have such a hard time with this Kyosho usually sends you an extra one or they always send you an extra one actually. Like I say, if you just slide that one corner in, you can just take your finger and it'll, it'll fall right down in there. Like I said, you can always just run around them to double check that it's actually in there and seated. But you'll see it if it's not locked in. So now that you got pretty much everything assembled, the caps have the bladder, the spring collars, whatever you want to call them, they have the O-ring. Now you move on to your uh, shock shafts and pistons. What you want to do is read your instructions and make sure you get the right ones. Let's see here. If it's anything like the three was, the white pistons are in the front and the uh, 
black pistons are for the back. Let's see here. I know I saw it somewhere on this sheet. Yeah, right here. So, yep. The white pistons are for the front and the black pistons are for the rear. So, easy enough. Boom, boom. Problem solved. So then you'll take your shock shafts, go ahead and grab the longer ones for the rear. If you're unsure, just hold them up because there will be a very big difference. I can not say a big difference, but a, a noticeable difference. Go ahead and grab your washer. Same thing as the rough and smooth side. I always like to put the smooth side down. Remember, black for the rear. And if you look at the picture, it shows you there's like a little fl the flat part of the piston goes up. Go ahead and drop that bad boy in there. Grab you one of your nuts. Thread it on there by hand. Just a couple turns so it doesn't fall apart on you. Another piston, again, flat part of the piston goes to the top. Now we can set these down, grab the fronts, and again, like I said, if you look at the shock, I mean, you, you, you'll know which end the piston goes on, you know. So these are the front. Don't forget your washer. Smooth side down. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Go ahead and put your nuts on there. It's the first time I've ever done them like two at once. <laughs> Usually I'll just do this one at a time, but for the sake of hurrying up in the video, I figured I would go ahead and try to do two. So now you can grab the little extra clip that Kyosho so nicely gives us, because if this thing was to take off on you, you probably never would find it. Put it in a safe place. Now put your shock shafts down and hunt for your, your tool, because it's got a mess. Go ahead and grab something like this. I've actually used to hold these things with pliers, like right on the threads. As long as you don't hold on the, the shaft itself, I mean, you should be okay. But I don't even like really using this style plier on the shaft. I don't like putting anything on them, if I'm being honest. I think that's the wrong size, guys. That's a little better. And what I do with these, I just kind of run them down. I put a little bit, because you definitely don't want to spin, so I hold them pretty tight. I just run them down to where they're, they're flush. I don't like try to crank down these things. And make sure the threads are sticking out of the back side of your pliers. That way you're not messing up the smooth part of your pliers. Go ahead and move on. Get through these kind of quick. Because these things really shouldn't come apart once you get them together. And another reason I'll crank on these things like crazy tight. Um, when you put the shock, when you once you get this through there and you put the shock end on, you'll I use this nut to tighten it in. You'll see. So I really don't think it's going to hurt. Now, this is why I used to like soak my my diff seals, my shock seals. Like I used to soak or rub this all over the the um, the O-rings before I put them together. But now I just kind of use them to protect, use this to kind of protect the threads. So like I'll just put a little, a good dab of it on my hand and just kind of use that to kind of protect the threads. So set those guys up there so they don't get dirt on where I just put that silicone oil. Move this cap real quick. 
I don't know, this just makes me feel better about like forcing the threaded end through my brand new O-rings and stuff. So that right there is like, this stuff is like really, really thick. And I just feel that it gets in there and kind of protects your O-rings as you press, when you press your shaft through there. Now, of course, the black pistons are for the rear. The rear are the longer throttle or uh, shock bodies. So you just want to line the hole up the best you can. And hopefully you get a hole in one and you don't like bounce all over the bottom of the shock body. And slowly push it through. Once you get it through, clean off your excess grease, set her back down. Grab the next rear one. Same thing, kind of line it up and then hold the piston straight and push it down. You don't want to, you don't want to be like wiggling it around and making a bunch of craziness. All right. Go on to the front. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. And just push it down in there ever so gently. I don't know what's worse, a leaky differential or leaky shocks. I would probably have to say leaky uh, shocks. Because then your car drives like crap. It makes a mess. All right. So now that we got those guys knocked out, just make sure your shock ends are all the same. You can go ahead and pop the balls in if you want to. Uh, don't ever really have a preference, but uh, for the sake of argument, we're gonna go ahead and do them. Like I said, you don't need this little tool. I've done it for a long time just by hand, just like holding it on the table and pushing on them. Snap that guy in there, go ahead and get the next one. Be careful so you don't go like crazy and push them out the other side. All right, so no particular order, just go ahead and take your driver, put it in there like that. Make sure you're on the nut that's in there. And what I do is I go ahead and thread these things down until all the thread is gone. But pay attention, make sure you're actually threading it in there straight, because the first couple of threads, you can really cross thread it. So just make sure it's actually threading on straight. You gotta look kind of close. Just make sure you thread it in until you can't see any more of the thread sticking out and then stop. It goes back to that having a smooth surface that's not, that you can actually sit stuff on. Once again, get it started. Check that it's going on there straight. Let her go. Makes it go all the way down until you can't see any more threads. That's a little crooked. Give her a twist. All right. Come on, start. There it goes. Ooh, that thing is crooked. <laughs> All 
That one's giving me a hard time. It's a little better. All the way down. All right, so once you got all your shock ends on there, got to grab some calipers real quick. Now this right here, you're basically just trying to make sure that the shocks are actually the same length. So we'll make sure your tool zero it out. Well, it really don't matter. It's just, as long as it's the same number, that's all that matters. So go ahead and zero the tool out. And I like to hold it all the way against the shock shaft itself on, at the front. And once you get to it, I like to use that little uh, lip, whatever you want to call it, on the shock end to get a reading. So we're at 35, 5 we'll say. Go to this guy. So as you can see, this one's a little bit longer, not by much. Like I said, you can get it as OCD as you want when it comes to uh, to doing this. I try not to get too OCD about it. And I always try to tighten them. I, I hate to loosen one. So, but sometimes it'll be bottomed out and it won't actually tighten anymore. So. A little bit more and I'm gonna call this one good. Come on, show me that magic number. Let's see here. Hmm. Can't live with myself with that. Let's tighten it a little bit more, see if it will go. Actually went a little bit over. That's what I was telling you guys, you can get as OCD as you want. Uh, let's see, where is this one at? Hmm. So just a touch. I'm calling that good. So we're going to run with that. So once I go ahead and get them already to the equal length, I'll go ahead and drop them down in my little shock holder, which we're not ready to put fluid in those guys just yet. I actually have like a little way to clean them out, um, which may or may not be a good thing. So, 44, 4, let's see here. Come on, be dead on. I'm going to go ahead and call that one that these are good. Let's check this one one more time. For some reason, my caliper is jumping all over the place right now. Dang it. Tighten this bad boy up just a little bit. Also, make sure you're actually holding it on there straight because if you got it crooked, it's going to be a, a messed up reading. I'm gonna go ahead and call those good as well. And what I mean by straight is that you actually have it on there even, that you're not like off like this or something like that, because it will, of course, give you a bad reading. Cut off you. Thank you. All right, guys. Now, believe it or not, the hard parts were much done. That's the 
the one irritating part about building shocks is just making sure they're the actual they're you know the length is correct now you can you can clean these things out if you want to like i usually just take a really really light shock oil and just squirt down in there and then just dump it out but for the sake of the video i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go ahead and move right on into filling these bad boys up so what we're going to do is we're going to go 45 in the front and 35 in the rear uh, don't ask me why we're just going to start there so i'm really hoping i got enough so go ahead and and as I'm pouring some in, once I get a little bit in there, I'll push the piston up a little bit, slowly push it up, push it up, push it up. You can hear it getting past the oil now. And once I get to the top, I'll put my oil down, pull the piston down, and you'll see you're getting a lot of air. So I do this so I don't end up with air trapped under the piston, because then you feel it all the way up top, and then, you know, you got to wait for the air to come to the top but of course now everybody's using like the little bleeders and stuff but um i haven't picked one of those up yet so we're just going to do her the old school way and you want to fill it really close to the top it don't have to be like to the brim but you want it pretty close to the top so and we'll go ahead whew, go ahead and jump on over to this other one do the same thing All right, go ahead and let this guy sit. Pick up our 35. I'm really running out of fluids. I'm not liking that. Slide that guy to the back. This is the first one I actually done correctly. What I'm trying, what what I'd like to do is get a bunch of oil on top of it and slowly push the piston the piston up while leaving oil on top of it. That way, it's sucking the fluid down and not like just causing a bunch of bubbles. And then when you pull it down, you'll get a couple bubbles at the top, but usually it's not too bad. Like that one actually worked the way it's supposed to. The rest of them just, it basically just caused a bunch of bubbles. But if you're not in a hurry and you time it right and you just push the piston up a little bit and put a big old, you know, a good layer of oil on it and you start pushing it up, it'll draw the oil down and the oil will just run down and be at the bottom that way when you push the piston to the top you'll get a couple bubbles and it will be okay and they'll come out really quick but now that one's a little over full so yeah we'll just let these guys sit for a second not that long and We'll come back and put the caps on and bleed the, the air out of these things. All right, guys. Now that these things have had time to let the air bubbles come to the surface, you can just run your piston up to the top, and it'll show you if there's any air. Sometimes there'll be, like, air stuck around this nut in the center. You can just take a tool and, and pop it. Like I said, if you have the little bleeders, whatever they call them, um, you don't have to worry about this because you're going to vacuum all the air out of it anyway. So I need to pick up one of those. Definitely would probably make life a little bit easier. <laughs> I 
All right, once you kind of verify that you don't have any air, you can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to put a cap on one. And this is where it can get kind of messy, which you kind of want it to, uh, you know, leak a little bit. We'll start with the rear. So just grab your cap, thread it on there. And this is where drilling that hole out is supposed to help you a little bit. If you kind of angle it towards you, you can see the threads coming up in the bleeder hole right here. And I always go until it's like right there at the top of it. And kind of see some already starting to come out. So once you get to that point, I just always take the microfiber, put it over it like this, and then just push the piston to the top. Kind of want to leave it or hold it down so you can see that, you know, the fluid coming out. So I'm using my pinky to push the shock shaft up and hold it in place. Turn the cap. And like I said, if you don't put your bushings in, you can use this little guy right here. It slides right in there, both sides. One side's a little better fit. And then you can kind of use that to, to lock it down. And your rebound, like people, you know, everyone has their own opinion on what's good. Like me, I don't ever have a preference. I just try to make sure that the rebound is, is even, um, so. Go ahead and work her a few times. And that's what I'm talking about, the uh, rebound. So usually if you build all the shocks at the same speed and stuff like that, your rebound will be pretty good. I either usually try for none or like this one, kind of halfway. So halfway or none is what I aim for. So. I'd say that's about halfway. So this guy's good to go. So we'll go ahead and like I said, the last time I pushed the rebound out, I'll just let that one sit and I'll use that one as the benchmark for this guy. Because the main thing is just, I think making it, making sure they're even. Once again, thread that bad boy up until you see the top of the threads coming to the top of the hole. Usually you'll start getting fluid out before you make it there. So let's say about like a 16th on your cap from being all the way to the bottom. And again, just push it up with your pinky. Once you get her to the top, If you have air in your shock, you'll hear it. It'll be like making a lot of noise. I'm going to need a little bit more out of you, old girl, I think. Yeah, we're still going. So that's what I'm talking about. You're just trying to get the rebound as even as possible. As you can see, this one's a little lacking. Let's try it one more time. You can get pretty OCD with this as well. I'm not going to get that OCD. As long as they're relatively close, I'm, I'll let them ride. That's pretty good, I'd say. So, yeah. That's pretty good. So, basically, you know, if you build them at the same speed, usually they end up being pretty even. Um, I just don't get, I used to like try to fight and get like zero rebound and stuff. I just, I don't mess with that anymore, guys. I just prefer to get it done and get on the track. So as long as they're, you know, half to none, I'm happy. All right, so we'll move on to the front. Let's 
these have got a little bit of air in them still so i'm gonna let these guys sit a little bit longer so we're just gonna go ahead and move on to finishing up the rear but the front are the same process with the caps and bleeding out the air and stuff i do the same exact thing so since we've already put those ball ends in there we don't have to worry about that and for your shock boots i'll show you on the front but you don't have to cut the rear but all i do for the front is i hold the shock or the boot the dust the dust boot on the shock and it'll, you'll see the line right there where you need to cut it and i'll just kind of hold it or mark it and then cut it with some like you know blade or flush cuts or something like that so if we have time i'll show you on that guy too so just make sure you wipe that guy so there's nothing in there this is not like 45 this is like really thin i don't even know what this is but this is just the bottle i keep it in this is just regular silicone oil i'll drop like one or two drops inside this boot and i'll just massage it a little bit and then when you take your end in there just kind of rub some of the oil on the end this will keep it from tearing your boot or snagging or being a headache to actually to mount on there so and it should just slip right to the end i'll kind of hold the shock so it doesn't like push in it'll help you push it and i always want to go to like right there where the little bevel is and you stop it clean off the oil turn it around to where you're i don't, I don't know what they call this but the little part the little the metal end is poking out and just line it up with your bleeder hole pop it on there and just like that your dust shield is on there so like i said i would do all these in order but like i'm still letting those bleed out so just go ahead and get the the boots on the rears we'll just i'll do the uh the fronts later off camera but trimming trimming that this dust shield for your front like right, so that i swear guys that's all i do like say so we'll say that's the length of the front i'll hold this guy up here like this and you can see where you want it to be so i'll either like pinch it like this and then i'll cut above my fingers or either i would just get like some flush cuts or something and i'll just go ahead and snip them right there where i need to so that's the only thing that you have to do to the front that's special so once you work your oil in there a little bit you don't put a lot of oil in there it's just like one drip like so it's just to help you get this thing to slide through there hold your shock shaft as you see it just comes right to the end if you don't have that oil in there it's it's pretty difficult line it up pull it to the edge right there just where you can see the little little bevel clean off the excess shock oil and just like that thing is ready to go so once you get that done you can grab one of your i forgot what they call these guys but and just go ahead and thread it on there i'm pretty ocd but like i said i wish kyosho wouldn't put these marks there because they never line up and i just i'm really ocd about the turns being 100 percent dead on so what i always do i'll show you um so i'll start out by like backing the threads like turn it you know turn it you know make it go or turn it to loosen it just so it gets past the o-ring and then when you turn it it should go on there but sometimes it will kind of still cross thread so keep turning it to the left until you feel it like pop in and there you go because you don't want to cross thread that guy i'm sure it's be bad so thread this guy all the way to the top hopefully it'll stop somewhere near where we need it to be like I said, I'm really OCD about this part. But I will show you guys what I've <clears throat> what I've been doing here lately. Okay, see this worked out pretty good. See how it like stopped. I either want these little marks to stop right in front or right on the side right here. So hopefully the next one that I do, they will be somewhere close to right here. But I don't use these marks. I just cut my own. I'll cut one in the front and I'll cut one in the back. But you gotta be very careful because once you cut a groove in there you know it's it's pretty much 
there's no going back and once you once you put these on there and you cut a groove like that is for this shock body you can't you can't put it on another one it won't line up right so again just keep loosening it until you feel the there we go until you fill up the, the o-ring pop over the threads and then you can go ahead and tighten it all the way up and let's see maybe we'll get lucky and it'll stop somewhere close no see that's what i'm talking about see how we're like we're way off now so this is the way the shocks will be on the car and you can just see like they're there the marks are way off so in this situation what i'll do is i'll take this guy back off <laughs> and try another one of them and see if we can get it to line up a little bit better now see if kyosha wouldn't put those marks on there then i could just cut my own mark and it would be whatever it wouldn't matter but since kyosha has those marks on there i'm gonna try to get it to line up the best i can with what we got so take that guy off and we'll try this one same process, loosen it and push on it until you feel it drop down, and then we can go. <laughs> this right here will make you miss having the old clips, the little plastic clips you should just like clip in. All right. It's not too bad um, as you can see we got the double marks right here on the outside double marks right here on the inside it's a little past the inside on this one and a little in front of the inside on this one so it's gonna be okay you can kind of see how how far they're off this one is right here it's going to loose this one right here so it's off just a touch I'll let that slide so what I'll do is I'll cut me a mark yeah I'll probably stay with it I'll cut me a mark right here close to that guy and then I'll cut one on the back side do the same thing I'll cut a mark here cut a mark here and when I mount them on the car which would be like this which would just put the bleeders facing in on the both rears you know when I turn it so when I turn this one it's going to line up right there and when I turn this one it's going to line up right there so that's the whole reason behind doing that guys so i'll just cut i'll line these little marks up or i'll just cut on my little marks it'll kind of keep it even and the front i'll try to get the same thing i'll try to get them to line up as close as possible but this part can be pretty if you're ocd it can be pretty bad for you so go ahead and clip that guy in because you know this is going to be your right rear go ahead make sure you got it facing the right way because these things are kind of a pain to get back out so face your bleeder in this will be your left rear bleeder in right rear so you want the little bushing to be facing out and that side facing in bleeders facing in it's a bum. the rears are done and for whatever reason Kyosho tells you to squish these shocks a few times before you mount them so that's always squeeze them twice <clears throat> like of course this only only counts if they're new so get your shock in there grab this little shock hold or whatever and same thing i'll kind of like pinch the uh dust boot to the shock shaft and i'll stick my finger in the little opening and use that to kind of keep it from pulling the dust cap or the dust boot down further sometimes you have to pull it back a little bit but what i aim to do i doubt you guys are going to see it i want that dust boot right at the edge of this plastic uh, shock end I just want the dust boot right there at the edge of it so just like that right at the edge of it don't want it sticking hanging way down like this or don't want it way up inside the dust or the spring or the shock end so and my theory behind that is it leaves a little bit of an opening right here and it doesn't allow the shock to like pressurize the boot so the boot won't get like where it's sucking and causing a vacuum or anything like that and you can turn your 
your dust boot to make sure it's sitting in there good. And that's it. And these are like really loose, so I'll cut those little grooves in there later on that one, which I forgot to do because I was talking. But I'll show you guys on this one. So <clears throat> what I do as far as like cutting this mark, since the, I'm lining up good with the factory Kyosha marks, I will just cut one for each one of the little lines that Kyosho has on there. So I got like a little V file. I'll line up with one of the marks, which it can be kind of hard to do it and bear down on the table. So I'll line up with one of the marks. So kind of like that. And what I always do, so if it's to the left a little bit, I'll use the right mark or I'll go to the right of it just a little bit. So you can kind of see the other mark right there. And I'll come over to the backside and cut a groove for that one. I used to just do one mark, but oh, this cap is a little messed up. It's got like a, it's not really grooved on the backside. See, stuff like that irritates me. So it's like, it's got like a nice grooved and you come to the back and it's like smooth almost. It's like it didn't get cut. That's going to drive me crazy. Yeah, I'm not still one of those. <laughs> this is falling apart. Yeah, see stuff like that drives me crazy. I'm gonna steal one of these off of one of my other cars. But for the sake of the video, guys, that's the argument right there. Um, so now when I turn it to the center, I can mark it'll line up and I can count my turns as I'm going down and it will be a-okay. So wasn't expecting that to be messed up. So, but anyway. So with this guy right here, I'll take it back apart. It's always something, guys. And I'll show you on this one. See this one's to the to the right just a little bit. I'll use that one that's on the inside right there. So make sure I get on it. clean off all the shaving and stuff. And as you see when I turn the shock, so this is the inside, that's the outside, but you're turning to the left to tighten. So turn this one to the left, it goes like a quarter turn. Same way with this one, turn it to the left, it goes like a quarter turn. So now you're starting out pretty even as far as like how many turns down you go, so. And that's all that's all my goal is trying to do with these right here so and else you'll sit on there like that and you put a turn on this one and you can put a turn get it lined up right and put a turn on this one and you'll actually tighten your shocks equally but since i had that issue i'm going to go ahead and end the video here but that walks you through the basic principle of building your shocks like so you don't have to cut this groove in there you can just put like a paint marker or you can just use the factory little marks that Kyosha put on there but it's really hard to get them lined up to where you know it's going to be equal like you can wherever the mark lands you can tighten it off of that so say So say if this mark lands right here on this shock and it lands right here on this shock, you can just look at where it lines up, tighten it one turn, look at where this one lines up, tighten it one turn, and you'll basically be doing the same thing. But for me, I want my mark to be right there in the center, so I just wish Kyosho wouldn't even put a mark on there. But yeah, the fact that this one doesn't have the little slots cut into it very good, 
on this back side kind of messed my whole program up so i'm gonna have to change those out because i can't live with that so but yeah basic principle of how to build your shocks all right guys so like i said that didn't work out really the way that i wanted but it basically shows you you know how i build my shocks basic principle and all that kind of stuff um that's said every driver has their little ocd things or every hobbyist whatever to me that is mine like i cannot stand with parts aren't identical so the fact that that one little little ring is doesn't have like the little little ribbing cut into it correctly is absolutely going to drive me crazy spend way too much money on these kits for it to be like not you know accurate i don't know so i have other cars so like right for example these are the shocks off of my mp or my mp10e um just the regular one not the tki version so i'm just gonna steal those off and build my shocks so <laughs> But all right, that's it for this video. Hope this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea or makes building your shocks a little less intimidating because there's really nothing to it. Uh, try not to be OCD and weird like me about building them because it is just a toy car. It doesn't really matter that much. The point is to get on track and have fun, so, which is what we're gonna do. In the next video, like I said, I'll start building the car and I'll walk you guys through some stuff and probably or hope to make it a little less intimidating for you because I know building a kit for the first time for me was really intimidating when you dump the box out and there's just bags of parts like this so main goal is not to overthink it it's just a toy and you're supposed to have fun and that's what it's all about which is what we're going to do all right guys i appreciate you for watching i hope you'll stick around and uh we'll see you on the next one